on this edition of InCycle, we're with Orica Scott looking at their grand tour ambitions and building for the future. We've got a great relationship with all three and, and the longer they spend with us, the longer we can develop them as leaders as well, which is what they've turned into be. A look into Drops Pro Cycling, an underdog team competing against the best in the world at the Ovo Energy Women's Tour. We must have got the smallest budget, I'd imagine, out of any of those teams. Um, and we've probably got the, the most inexperienced squad, but we're punching over above our weight. But first, we spend some time with Mike Tunison at home in Holland. Ik ben Mike Teunissen, professioneel wielrenner bij Team Sunweb. Ja, als je kijkt, het is mooi weer. Je, je stapt op de fiets, je geniet een beetje van de omgeving. En uh, twee, drie uurtjes later heb je gewoon lekker, lekker gesport. En uh, ja, dat is natuurlijk met weinig andere sporten te vergelijken. En zeker nu, uh, nu ik prof ben, kom ik op uh, best wel veel speciale plekken waar ik anders eigenlijk nooit gekomen zou zijn. Om daar eigenlijk een rondje te fietsen. Dat is eigenlijk heel raar, maar dat maakt het ook uh, heel speciaal. En, uh, ja, ik zou eigenlijk niks anders liever willen. Ik heb nou het gevoel dat ik me hier het beste kan ontwikkelen. Uh, als je kijkt naar de andere jongeren bij, uh, bij Sunweb en in, ook in het verleden, die maken allemaal echt hele grote stappen. En uh, dat zijn ze mij ook van plan. En uh, dat verhaal klonk heel goed. Dus daar ga ik graag in mee. En uh, ja, nu is het aan mij om te laten zien of dat ook lukt of niet. Het voornaamste doel eigenlijk uh, met de ploeg is om, uh, om stappen te zetten in, uh, in het klassieke werk. We hebben een aantal jongens voor eigenlijk, ja, die dezelfde leeftijd zijn als ik. En ja, daarmee hopen we eigenlijk door te groeien tot, tot de top. Parijs op is een van de meest uh, speciale wedstrijden en zeker bij de belofte is dat ook een hele ja, uh, aansprekende koers waar eigenlijk uh, ja, alleen maar grote namen winnen en uh, dat is ook eigenlijk een van de doelen van, uh, van een seizoen voor heel veel jongens en ook voor mij en ook daarvoor gelden dat uh, dat, ook, dat ook eindelijk eens een keer uh, lukte en uh, ja dat is wel echt heel speciaal en uh, ook daar denk ik nog een hele goede herinnering aan terug. Zeg maar, tussen de wereld, uh, ja, tussen de monumenten bij de elite en zo'n koers bij de belofte zit niet één stap, maar uh, echt verschillende stappen. En daar heb ik nu ook al wel gemerkt dat, uh, dat het één echt niet automatisch betekent dat je ook uh, in aanmerking komt voor het andere. Dus uh, er is nog een lange weg te gaan natuurlijk. Dat is wel, uh, wel het streven om uiteindelijk uh, ja, gewoon uh, finales te rijden en de koersen te kleuren, ook in, uh, ook in de allergrootste koersen. Ja, dat is, iets, uh, dat is iets heel speciaals, dat, uh, dat maak je zeker niet al te vaak mee. En als je kijkt hoe vaak je daar nou voor overwinningen kan doen, is dat uh, helemaal op één hand te tellen. En uh, ja, voor mij ook, dat, dat droom je heel vaak van. Maar uh, echt uh, daadwerkelijk in de kans uh, komen om een WK te winnen, is, uh, dat is tamelijk uniek. En voor mij ook. En uh, ja, dat, als dan uiteindelijk een keer zo'n droom als het ware uit kan komen, dat is wel uh, dat is heel speciaal. En ik denk er nog heel vaak aan terug, ja, zeker. Nou, ik heb eigenlijk het jaar nadat ik wereldkampioen was uh, tegen ene Wout van Aten, ene Mathieu van der Poel moeten knokken. En uh, het is niet dat ik ervoor wegvlucht, maar uh, ik, ik, daar zag ik wel in dat die jongens uh, aan mate groot waren. Dus ik zag voor mezelf ook uh, qua toekomstperspectief niet. Uh, niet het allermooiste voor het crossen eigenlijk. En um, nou ja, blijkt dan dat die twee echt supertalenten zijn. Hè? En dat die gewoon uh, als, nog, nog als belofte zeg maar al uh, gewoon, uh, ja, de beste van de wereld zijn uh, bij de profs. Dus uh, ja, achteraf had je dat kunnen, ja, was je blijven doorgaan in het crossen, dan had je daar gewoon een heel mooi uh, subtop kunnen zijn waarschijnlijk. Maar ja, daar, daar kies ik niet voor. Uh, ik kies nu voor deze stap. En ik denk dat ik hier nog heel veel marge in heb, omdat ik altijd gekost heb en nooit volledig voor het weg uh, weer in gekozen heb. Uh, 
Hij komt natuurlijk van de cross af en kwam toch redelijk dicht bij cross, moet ik zeggen. Dus uh, het, is, het is niet officieel uh, ja, een Vlaamse voorrechtsgeschikken, maar uh, het is wel een hele mooie koers. En, uh, ja, naast alle kassei een keertje over gravelwegen rijden is ook wel, ook wel erg leuk, moet ik zeggen. Is dat anders? Ja, dat is wel anders. Dat kan je ook niet echt vergelijken. Um, tuurlijk zijn de klassieke mannen hier, uh, hier ook goed. Maar je ziet ook klimmers die hier, uh, die hier heel goed onder recht komen. En uh, dat is natuurlijk in het Vlaamse werk niet, uh, niet, van, niet van toepassing. Dus ja, het is wel een andere koers, maar het is ook een mooie koers. Want ja, je krijgt van heel veel uh, verschillende renners eigenlijk. Uh, die krijgen de kans om hier uh, ja, kort te eindigen. Dus uh, ja, en het is een schitterend decor. Dus ik, ik heb genoten. En uh, ja, misschien is het inderdaad al de favoriete koers van mij. Nou, het zou alvast heel mooi zijn als het überhaupt zover is, want uh, dat is al een hele uitdaging. Dat heb ik ook de laatste jaren al wel uh, doorgekregen. Maar uh, ik ben me ook bewust van het feit dat ik nu, uh, nu 24 ben en op een gegeven moment ben je ook geen talent meer. En moet je daar eigenlijk wel, uh, wel stil aan geraken. En uh, ja, goed, als dat over twee, drie jaar nog niet aan de hand is, dan, uh, ja, dan moet je misschien gaan uh, bekijken of het wel, uh, wel slim is om ja, voor jezelf te proberen altijd het hoogste na te streven. Misschien kun je dan beter overgaan aan een ondersteunende rol. Maar uh, ja, voorlopig uh, heb ik vorig jaar voor het eerst mijn klassieke seizoen gedraaid. En dat ging eigenlijk redelijk goed. Nou ja, nu uh, 12 in Nieuwsbad is ook al niet slecht. Dus uh, ja, als ik stappen kan blijven zetten de komende jaren, dan, uh, dan zit het er wel in, denk ik. Maar uh, ja, wat ik zei, dat is niet gemakkelijk en uh, we gaan ons best doen, maar we moeten zien. Orica Scott's identity has always been as the Australian team with opportunistic riders like Simon Gerrans. But in recent years, there's been a shift. The likes of Esteban Chavez and the Yates brothers, Simon and Adam, has given the team a new focus, Grand Tours. It's a journey that began in 2014. We knew we uh, had some talent on our hands, but uh, when they're that age and, and a different story with Esteban coming back from injury, we didn't know what to expect, especially in the, in the first year. The two Yates, obviously, the year before had come with very, very uh, impressive results in the best under 23 races in the world. We knew that they'd had, they were capable of getting some big results. The difference between under 23 races and, and the World Tour is that it's a big, big jump, so you never really know what the under 23s are capable of doing until they actually get there. And they're really looking to, you know, start developing the GC guys. So they don't really want to, you know, just go out and buy, you know, one of the guys who are already established who you know, who have proven themselves. And I uh, yeah, managed to be one of the up-and-coming guys who, that they you know, had an eye on, as well as my brother and Esteban. It's true we are one team for fight for the GC and the victors, not just with me, with the Jaitsis as well. So this is unbelievable, and we, we try to continue with this plan for the few GRs is coming. My first years in the team, I was already, uh, you know, given sort of a leadership role and, you know, trying to go for the GC with not too much pressure, you know, just to to really learn the role slowly without um, without stress. And I think for now it's worked pretty well. Simon Yates was his uh, a, a neo pro riding the Tour de France. That was a big, big step. So that was impressive just to handle the stress of the Tour at I think it was 20, 21 years of age. Oh, of course, it was an incredible experience. You know, to ride the tour, especially being, you know, in the, my home country there. Um, and yeah, for sure, it, that uh, it helps, you know, through the rest of your career. Uh, just riding Grand Tours, you know, really build that strength of, of, of riding over several weeks at a time. And uh, yeah, for sure, it's uh, a great benefit. Esteban, obviously, he rode the Vuelta after a big comeback year, and he did a very, very impressive result. And then Adam also had a you know, one tour of Turkey nearly won San Sebastian, crashing 2K from the finish in the front group, and then he did it also a very impressive uh, Tour of Spain. So after their first year, we, we, we knew we had some special ones on our hands. With results such as Chavez's second place at last year's Giro and third at La Vuelta, the team are on the brink of a Grand Tour breakthrough. This year, with the signing of Roman Kreuziger, they're hoping to make that final step up to the podium.
Yeah, I think you want guys with experience around them uh, in crucial moments, and, and Roman has been our, our key buy for us. And I spend the month of July is going to be where he's really going to earn his dollars there. It's the first time I work with him, but I think we clip really, really good, and he try and he keep to us all this experience he has. He's professional since 12 years ago, so it's really good for the team. Yeah, he's a guy who's finished three, top 10 three times in the Tour de France on his own. So he, he came here, yeah, he's, had, he's got some personal goals that he's going to go after during the season, but uh, he knows he's coming here to be uh, our road captain in the mountain stages uh, in the Tour. So what's left for Orica Scott to conquer before they claim a Grand Tour? Well, I think all three of them, time trolling is their, is their weak, weak point. They're, all three of them are pure climbers, so they've, if they want to win Grand Tours, they want to win stage races in general, they've really got to improve on their time trolling, and they're all, they've come a long way so far. We try for a bit better at the time trial as well, because it's one maximum sport and super specific, and for one guy like 55 kilograms is not easy. If you do a comparison with Dumoulin or Chris Room, so we work in that all the lots of season and we need to continue work in that in the future. This year the team have had a clear plan heading into the Grand Tours. Adam Yates following his young rider jersey at last year's tour with a top 10 finish at this season's Giro d'Italia. His result at the Giro was really solid, and I think uh, it's going to be of great benefit for the, for the future. He's seeing a different style of racing, which is the which is the Giro, and he'll take that knowledge and experience on through for the second half of the season and, and for next year. It's exciting because you know they've been all three of them have been projects we've had. They've turned professional with us in the, in the first World Tour team, so we've got a great relationship with all three. And and the longer they spend with us, the longer we can develop them as leaders as well, which is what they've turned into be. I think drop cycling is really unique in the way that um, we're a smaller team and we come here to really enjoy the races and that, that really fuels us. We all trust each other, we know each other's strengths and weaknesses and I think that's really important when you're representing yourself at the front. We're all prepared to sacrifice for each other and, um, and work as a team. Drops is a big family, everybody does everything for each other. We're still a growing team, we're still learning, we're getting as much experience as we possibly can, but we're having great fun with it. You know, we're really trying to get ourselves out there. We go into each stage wanting to do the best we can, uh, not scared of who we're up against. We rode the women's tour last year, um, and we're, we're only five months old. Obviously, we must have got the smallest budget, I'd imagine, out of any of those teams. Um, and we've probably got the, the most inexperienced squad, but we're punching over above our weight. This year is a lot about us being part of the race as opposed to just um, participating and trying to get round. So we're really looking forward to trying to make our mark on this race. To kind of be clear in our mind of what our overall objectives are, and that is to get Alice up there in the top 10 on GC and get as many UCI points in the under 23 classes. And then we start looking about how we can perform in the stages. If we don't get in the top 10 at one of the stages, we'll be disappointed. If we don't get someone in the top 10 on GC, we'll be disappointed. And this is a World Tour race with the biggest teams in the world. So the fact that we would be disappointed if we didn't achieve those results, I guess speaks volumes for how ambitious we are and where we've come from. And we're all in this together, aren't we? We're all in this together. Pretty special group of people to be looking after. The women's tour is a really important race. And I think going into these races, we're kind of like the underdogs, but um, we always give it our best and it's going pretty well so far. We've got great potential in the form of Alice. Um, we're all here to support her as much as we can. You know, she's proven definitely this season, the start of the season. She's had great rides in, you know, really top quality, high caliber fields in World Tour races. So we want to do our best to support her.
So the first stage is Daventry to Kettering and my mum and dad live about two miles from the finish in Kettering but also we race through Oundle which is where my mum works so she's decorated her shop up a bit and uh, yeah so it'll be really nice to have some home support. And there's nobody going to get past Voss. Voss comes up to the line for second. Third then is Majuras, the Luxembourg champion. It was a tough finish and I think it came from a bit far back, but um, yeah, I went all the way to the line and uh, got seventh in the end and best British rider, so I'm really happy with it. And uh, yeah, it's a good start to five days. Hopefully I can carry it on. definitely taken more of a, a domestic role so you know sacrificing myself for the for the leaders in the team I, I do that at every single race so that's something that I'm more than happy to do yeah, I get such a buzz from it it's as you know it's as good as winning when you've helped your teammate to either win or you know get one of those standout results I would, wouldn't have it any other way Alice looked comfortable as normal. All, all six riders still in the peloton, so quite happy with that. Um, we'll see where we go from here, see how the race develops. We're a small team, but I think our team ethics and the way we work together and work for each other is how we've managed to achieve some special results together. I think I went down the pothole, my hands came off the handlebars, we were going quite fast. Did you hit your head? Um, I don't think so. Not last hour, I was just like, I just want this to be over. So how about we get Martina in the break, so Martina is in the front, and then Martina rides tactically. So when if none of the girls can follow you on the climbs, then Martina's in front of you when you might come up with a group. We can't be, be scared of the names that are, are there, you know. There are some massive names here at this tour. It's just about, you know, getting stuck in and making a name for ourselves. It is Barnes trying to come through on the inside, but it's the power of Hoskins, of Ella Cipollini in the yellow that's going to get it. Hoskins going to take this from Barnes, very close on the line. Hoskins takes it from Barnes. Yeah, our plan was today that I go in a breakaway, that I'm with Alice at the end. Uh, and uh, then I saw that uh, the uh, Sharon Geller go and uh, then Jasinska attacked and then I saw my chance to go and then I was really happy when I saw that Alice is coming in the group and I saw that she has already a good position here and it was awesome that she did the second place. We are, we are so happy that she's on the podium. Yeah, and uh, that I won the competition today the most, most, most competitive rider. I'm really, really happy. It's, uh, yeah, it's a nice present for the efforts. It's a really tough sprint. Um, I'm sprinting against some of the best in the world, so I was really happy with how it went. Um, second in, uh, yeah, well, it was my best ever World Tour result, so I'm over the moon. Stage four should be really interesting. It's the closest stage to my home. Um, so that's going to be a really, really tough day out, like from up north, and it's really hilly. So it will be a bit grippy, and I'm sure it will split to pieces that day. Well done, Martina. Good work today. The riders that race in a World Tour race, there's a lot more tactics that go on, and it's more kind of like calculated. You know, there's such good riders, and they'll be saving themselves for the ideal moment that they want to go. And you know, when they go, then it's with force, so it is a lot harder. Come on, guys, nearly there now. Long descent off the top of this one. Come on, fight, fight, fight. I think for drops it's important to stay calm because um, there are a lot of girls are very young and uh, they don't have uh, 
so much energy yet to do these very long races. Now shut up, take, them, take her up, Abby, mate, come on. Proper bike riding, fantastic, proper. On the bike, it, it, it's definitely stepped up. We, we're now a, a, a marked team, certainly in some races more than others. Um, so yeah, it's definitely a factor and I think it will make it a little bit harder for us to get some results possibly. Well done, guys. Three guns to the finish on a day like today. Really fantastic. We've had a, a seventh, an eighth, and a tenth in World Tour races. So, um, you know, we've, we've got the riders that, that can then achieve these results. And, you know, they're all very young. And as they get more experienced, um, you know, I think they're going to be even more dangerous. It's incredible. It's such a great atmosphere to race in the UK, world tour level, with all of the world's top riders. We have to earn respect and we need to, you know, respect the race itself, but we definitely want to give our best and, you know, achieve our potential. And yeah, we just try to have fun. We're here to have fun at the end of the day and enjoy racing our bikes. And on paper, some of our results show some of our riders right down on GC, but that's um, not reflective of their performance, it's just how they've sacrificed their race for our leader and um, there's not many people out there that are prepared to do that so that's what makes us stand out from other teams. And I think the happiness of the riders is also really, really important and happy riders pedal faster so that is, yeah, what brings us more success. It's been an emotional week full of ups and downs. Um, been really proud of all of you. You've all been amazing all week. If there had been an under 23 jersey, Alice would be wearing it. It's another level that we're at, and I'm very proud of all of you. We all get on so well, we're all really good friends, and I think when that happens and you're really comfortable with your teammates, then you know anything is possible. Yeah, so how far have we come in such a short period of time? Well, it's quite um, phenomenal, really, isn't it? 18 months. It's been a whirlwind, and um, there's no sign of it stopping anytime soon. <laughs>